We're here with head coach Tony Elliott. Coach, you know, it uh, feels good to win, especially over these first five games. You've been close. There were three games with a combined of, uh, a loss total of seven points. We all are aware of that. I know you're pleased with it, but were you pleased with the manner in which the team won the football game in, in the different periods of the game, resiliency, execution, things of that nature? Yeah, there, there are a lot of things that, that, that obviously, you know, when you look back at it, when we evaluate the film, we're going to critique and say we could have done better. But, man, let me tell you something. I'm not a, a win's a win, right, and, and they're hard to come by. And that's a good football team over there. They're very well coached. Uh, they're a prideful bunch, and they came in here, you know, wanting to, uh, you know, do everything they could to prevent us from from victory. And uh, but there were there were a lot of things that that, that you saw. You know, we're down uh, ten points. Uh, you know, we're down ten points, and then we we go up by uh, we we what was it thirteen to three, and then we end up twenty to thirteen at the end of the right there before the half, uh, and then we only had three possessions uh, in the uh, in the second half. You know, one we're going down the score penalty. We have a turnover. We score and then we have a chance right there to, to end the game uh, with the ball in our hands. So uh, a lot to be proud of and just really, really proud of those young men in there. Um, man, it's been a long time coming. Uh, they've worked extremely hard. They've had to persevere through a, man, a, ton, of, a ton of adversity. And I think that, uh, you know, most people know what's on the surface, but you know, behind the scenes, just the things that these young men have had to had to persevere through. Just extremely proud of, of them. So, man, hey, I don't I don't care. Some people could say it might not be pretty, but a win's a win, and uh, we needed a win. And we got a win. The guys found a way uh, versus a team that came in here to challenge us. Coach, there were times in the game where there were fourth down decisions, and and you made the decision to you know Brosterhouse, you know, took it under center and and mm-hmm. snuck, and just were you. Were you trying to show your team and sometimes in those decisions within the right context that you want to be aggressive, you know, in, in physical in those moments? Right, definitely. There were, a, there were a couple of fourth down situations where we needed points. So we had to kick, you know, in the first in the first half. You know, you're in a, you're in a tight ball game. You know, possessions are a premium. Uh, again, we had one possession, uh, I think, there in the third quarter. And then going into the fourth quarter, we're on our second possession. Uh, we had practiced that with uh, Grady. He's a bigger guy. We'd put that package in. Um, had practiced, you know, we felt like we had enough reps in it. But, yeah, definitely the fourth and one and the fourth and three. And, you know, Tony went and got it on fourth and three, laid himself – uh, laid himself on a line, but in different situations in the game, uh, you want to be strategic. But I felt like down the stretch, right there, uh, man, we had to stay on the field. We had to finish with with points to keep the ball away from uh, uh, from William and Mary. Last couple of things: Can you talk specifically about Tony uh, Musket? Because it was clear to the observers that he was kind of favoring the shoulder and and was in some pain. Can you talk about his toughness and what you got from him I today? Mean, I, I, I think you saw it. Uh, I mean, you, you saw saw the guy out there, and he's he's scrapping, he's battling. Uh, didn't do a great job of, of of protecting him. You know, we gotta we gotta go to work on that. That's the area we gotta gotta get better. We gotta quit getting our quarterback hit. But man, this is a guy that's playing with a with a shoulder injury. You know, he's persevering. He's giving everything that he has. He's running the football. All right, he's trying to trying to win the game. So I think you saw uh, just how tough and how much he cares about this football team. What a competitor that he is. Um, and then right there in the situation where uh, the third down, I mean the fourth down, he reached for it. Uh, felt something in the shoulder, came out for a play, and uh, obviously we're trying to figure out uh, the severity of it, right? Because we got a, you know, we got a young quarterback there that's kind of played his four games, and and what you don't want to do is you don't want to, you know, burn a year from one play, right? So you don't want to put a guy in for one play. Now, if they're telling us from the tent that it's going to be an extensive uh, amount of time, then Calandria was good. Hey, we're 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 going with it. So uh, it was it was it was managed. I thought the right way. Uh, they told us in time it was one play. That's why you saw Grady in there, and then Musket was back. Back out there and then late in the game uh, obviously uh, trying to go score there but with your quarterback uh, and you got loaded boxes you know you're not going to run your quarterback in that in that situation you're going to try and put it on the uh, on the back of the OL and put it on the back of the running backs final thing cleaner game in terms of penalties and things as you saw yeah uh, still still some some penalties that we we, we can avoid um, and and again we, we got to understand you know the importance of eliminating those because that was a, there was a big one down we're getting ready to score a touchdown Right, and then we end up being third and twelve, and and you know the next play, you never know what's going to happen. So uh, we we had less than we did the, the previous game, but still uh, not where where we need to be. And uh, and we got to go back to, to work uh, helping the guys. We got to coach better, uh, help them have a better understanding of situations, uh, so that we can eliminate some of those penalties. Uh, Jeff and Greg and Mike. There was a wild sequence at the end of the first half, starting with the Sparks punt, and then <laughs> William and Mary's in the red zone. You get a turn. You get a takeaway. Then Tony leads that driving. You get the touchdown. Given that William and Mary was going to get the ball first in the third quarter, how big 
was that whole sequence? Oh, it's the it's the middle eight. You know, we talk about we talk about the middle eight, and so you know, prior to the bad punt, uh, defense. You know, there's there's a there's a penalty, so they're backed up. Man, defense three and out gets us the ball, and then we 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 I think what do we do? We overthrow, we drop, and then we get sacked. All right, so now we got to. Kick it, kick it, kick it away, and you know that's very uncharacteristic of Sparks. And you know we got to evaluate, see what happened there. But man, you're not expecting in that situation, right? You're trying to be aggressive. You're trying to to play to get an extra possession to go score before you go into half. Uh, not just because William and Mary is getting the ball in the second half, but because you want to win the middle eight and you got an opportunity there. You got three timeouts, and then you know we we give it right back to them, and uh, and then we get the fumble. And so it was a, it was a crazy uh, sequence. I, I'm just asking the boys, man, for my sake. Man, let's not make it so hard. You know, the first time we had an opportunity in a two-minute drive, let's go score the first time uh, and let the defense play as opposed to, to making, it, making it close. Uh, along those lines, at the end of the first half, second straight week, you go to Malachi in that, in that late half uh, situation. Why would you want to be aggressive there after, after not, if it not working out a couple plays earlier? And, and why is Malachi the, the, the top target? Because just, trying to, just trying, to, trying to score points, man, trying to, trying to be aggressive, trying to no one in particular the second time around, we know, okay, they're going to get the ball. And, and, and then we, we got the turnover. Defense did their job. Man, let's, let's be aggressive there. And, you know, Malachi is, is, is a guy that, that, uh, that is emerging, and I think people are starting to, to realize what he's capable of. And if you watch the majority of the game, they were shaded uh, a safety over the top of him. Even though they were playing some man coverage, they were shading. And then if if it wasn't man coverage, they were playing a two shell. But uh, um, you know, he made a play, and in that situation right there, so you're sitting there. It's a, it's 11 seconds on the clock, right? We don't have a timeout, right? We won't have a chance. It's third and one, okay? We won't have a chance to spike it because if you, if you, if you try to get back on the ball, let's say you quarterback sneak. Right, you're, the clock's going to run out. You're not going to have enough time for it to get reset. And then the same thing, if you run the ball, more than likely the clock's going to run out because you got to have three seconds to be able to spike it. So the thought process there was, hey, in this situation, one shot at the end zone or out of bounds, and then we're going to kick the field goal and take the three points going into the uh, going into the half. And then they just uh, they gave us one on one. Uh, Tony put a ball up there, and Malachi made a diving catch. Sounds like you guys challenged the running backs to, to break mm -hmm. more tackles, make plays like yeah. that. Paris kind of set the, the tone a little bit with kind of trucking that safety early in the, in the first quarter. What did you like from the running backs today? Yeah, so, so my, my, my challenge to the team, and I challenged them you know, pretty, you know, pretty, pretty intensely this morning um, before, we, before we, we came to the stadium about you know, where we are and what the expectations need to be uh, in terms of, uh, of performing. Uh, and I said, this is a team that comes in, I think they're just under 300 yards a game rushing. That's what they do. They run the football. And I said, hey, we got an opponent in here. Man, let's come out with the better rushing attack. Right. Let's do a great job defensively of stopping their run game, and then let's get our run game going. And uh, we were able to uh, hit a couple, a couple big plays. But then I thought the backs, you know, did a decent job of running through uh, uh, arm tackles. Still too many uh, uh, free hitters. You know, guys uh, turn loose in the backfield. You know, some of that is going to be, you know, structurally, it's, it's a challenge to get off to the second level. But uh, overall, uh, I thought the guys accepted the challenge to run the ball, uh, and that's what we want to do. Uh, that's what we want our identity to be offensively. Um, it sets the tempo for for. Everybody. Everything else, and uh, just proud of the guys uh, for being able to uh, to put it together against a team that is, you know, one of the top uh, defenses in the country at their respective level. And in particular, did, did Paris? I mean, running with passion sounds like kind of his thing. Did, did he really answer that challenge? I thought he did. I thought Kobe did as, as, as well. Um, Tony did uh, when he pulled the ball down. Uh, so, but it starts up front, you know. So, so when you can get the backs going and you get them, you know, through the line of scrimmage and onto the second level uh, before they're touched, you know, it, it, it's usually going to turn into, you know, um, longer gains. And then you can play a little bit more aggressively because you're behind. I mean, you're in front of the chains, right, and not behind the sticks. So, I thought in the first half, you know, we were aggressive trying to throw the ball. We missed on a couple shots, man, right out the gate, first one of the game. We had had them open. We had Malik open. Uh, we had a couple shots that uh, that we didn't connect on, uh, but uh, but it all. Started with uh, with being able to run the football. Check. You said start, it starts up front. There's some changes on the right side yeah. of that O line with Uganda moving inside. Just you know, quick evaluation of how that look and what you liked about the O line. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 going to be uh, first day. They, they we had 230 something yards, you know, rushing, right? So obviously, anytime I don't care who you're playing against, anytime you rush for more than 200 yards, right? Uh, the big boys up front are are doing something. They're 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 moving people around and giving you uh, giving you running lanes. Um, Got to see what the, the the situations were with the sacks. You're still giving up way too many sacks, and you know some of it 
is is it's not all the, it's not all on the OL. You know, some of it is the quarterback stepping up too early or flushing the pocket a little bit too early. Um, but but that's where we got to get better. Uh, but pleased with the run game. Uh, but you know, overall, not pleased with the fact that we got our quarterback hit uh, too much. Coach, what did you see from Tony Musket today as a leader on the field and off the field? Oh man, he's he's a, he's a competitor. He's a warrior. Man, he he's a uh, the leader of the football team. Uh, a guy that's playing, you know, playing injured. You know, probably gonna have to have surgery on that shoulder at the end of the season, right? Could easily, easily, have done, you know, the easy thing and said, you know what, coach, I need to go ahead and fix my shoulder now and get a head start, right? But here's a guy that that said, no, coach, I'm playing. All right, and so he's practicing every single day with a hurt shoulder. He's playing with a hurt shoulder, and to be honest with you, it's probably going to hurt him the rest of the season. All right, it's not one of those deals where it's going to—it's not going to fix itself. All right, so so uh, just his toughness, his passion, man, his love for his teammates. He's a competitor, and uh, and what he showed you is he's a guy that 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 it's not just wanting to win. He's a guy that needs to win, uh, and that's why he, he he does what he does. Uh, was it the run game? Was it Tony? What did you see as the key to, to kind of piecing it all together today? You know, just uh, uh, guys, you know, doing their 111th. And, and, and I feel when, and when we watch the tape, we'll see that we had more plays where we had 11 guys headed in the right direction working together as opposed to, you know, some of the, some of the previous games. Uh, so I don't know if it's any one thing as much as it is guys just saying, you know what, enough's enough. Being close, we don't want to be close anymore. I mean, we want to, you know, take that next step. Uh, and in order to do that, uh, you don't have to do anything other than just do your job, play in and play out. And it's, it's easier said than done, right? And a lot of people say it, but for 60 minutes uh, to be able to focus in when your body's tired, when you got somebody across from you, when things are moving fast, when you're trying to process adjustments, you're going with the momentum of the game, the ebbs and flows. Uh, but I was proud of the guys uh, that I thought that they maintained their focus. Um, and I never felt like we were satisfied, you know, once we had a lead. Now, we, 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 we didn't have some clean plays, but I felt like, you know, the guys, you know, made an effort to really, really focus because there's going to be ups and downs. And there's going to be a lull in the game somewhere. And the teams that can consistently win at a high level are the ones that can, can manage the lull and not let it uh, take over the team, that they battle against it and they find a way to, uh, to flip the momentum back in their, uh, their direction. Obviously, it's been a while since you guys last one. You've been through a lot. So yeah. how meaningful was this victory? Oh, man, it's, it's huge. Um, obviously, the record. I mean, I know nobody's, trust me, nobody uh, uh, in that locker room, in this organization, right, uh, it feels is excited or feels good about where we are, right? You got a, you got a group of folks that, uh, man, uh, realize the opportunities we didn't take advantage of, man, and we want to make sure that we capitalize on the, the ones going forward. But really, it's just confirmation for those guys in there because they've worked extremely hard. Uh, as I said, there's, there's a ton of adversity uh, that they've been through that has been seen publicly, and then there's a lot of adversity that a lot of people don't, don't realize. Uh, and the fact that they show up every single day Right. Um, and also, that give you another thought. Shout out to the, the student body. You know, I thought they showed up. You know, that's the three home games where, man, they've showed up. They've been loud. They've been been very supportive. So very, very uh, appreciative uh, of the uh, of the students and the fans as well for, for, for showing up. I know it's not uh, what any of us uh, desire or expect, but I'm appreciative of, of them showing up. And that's what you guys, you got a football team that shows up uh, every single every single day. Tony, I talked to Zach Yarborough um, about his journey with breast cancer. Obviously, you're mm -hmm. wearing the pink today. He's spoken to the team before. How important is it to you to bring him in to speak to the young men about his journey and just to be able to have a day like today where you're, where you're drawing awareness? Right. Uh, great, great question. And, and first and foremost, he's, he's a former, he was a former player, right? So it starts, it starts there. So, you know, he's part of the brotherhood. Uh, and it's a great opportunity for him to pour into the, uh, to, to this generation by being present and having a chance to, to address them and speak. And then uh, he's got a unique story, right, that, 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 you know, can really open up some people's eyes and give people a different perspective on, uh, on breast cancer that, that I know is very rare uh, to have it in, in, in males. But, you know, he's one of the one of the survivors, right, dealing with it. And uh, but then also his spirit, you know, just the spirit that he has, the passion that he has for this institution, this team, and then also the cause that he's uh, that he's fighting for. And, and then we have players uh, in the in the uh, locker room and staff members that have been uh, affected uh, directly, you know, by uh, breast cancer. And, and I know that we're talking about a football game, and uh, that's, you know, what my profession is. That's what these young men are very passionate about. But at the end of the day, man, life is real. 
right? You know, we, 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 we pray that we walk away from the game every single day. And when we walk away, when we leave here in the next 30 minutes to an hour, man, we're going back to real life. And that's real life. And so it's really an honor and a privilege to be able to play for something bigger than yourself. So, so you know, shout out to all the survivors uh, out there. Uh, you know, I got to shout out Miss Kath. You know, she's like my mom. Uh, that's Coach Sweeney's wife. Y'all know that her, her, you know, her journey with, uh, with breast cancer. So I uh, just want you to know that I see you. I love you. I appreciate you. Um, but, uh, but it's just a privilege to be able to play for something bigger than yourself.